Hello, you might know me from the Watchfinder channel where I usually talk about watches that you might like. This is a little bit different. I'm going to be selfish today and talk about watches that I like. Let's see if you like them too. The first of the watches that I've chosen to talk to you about today, of the 10 watches that I like, is a Casio. It's nice and affordable, but it's also really, really cool and I absolutely love it. This is the G-Shock Sun Reflect Series GA2100 SRS7A. I actually discovered it whilst doing some research into a different Casio and mentioned it on the Watchfinder channel. I just really, really like it. Now I'll let you into a little secret. I have no idea how to use a Casio. There's a lot of different buttons and an instruction manual that I can't be bothered to read. So my love for the Sun Reflex series is purely aesthetic. The clear case and strap are of course really, really cool, but my favorite thing about it is the iridescent dial. It reminds me of a TVR I saw as a kid, a car that I've always wanted. I don't know why, but I have this fascination with shiny things that change colour. Even my bank card has a, a little hologram on the back that I look at when I pay for stuff. They do say that that iridescent coating actually makes the watch really hard to read, but I kind of don't care. I'm a bit superficial like that sometimes. I prefer the way it looks to the way it functions, and I'm all right with that. The best thing about it is that it is only £120, so I actually went to buy one. But because of you lot, they're all gone. They're all sold out. Thanks. My next favourite watch of the moment is a Grand Seiko, and I don't think that will be any surprise, but perhaps the actual Grand Seiko that it is might be surprising. I've always loved the SBGW 231G because it is so simple and so beautiful. It has this hand-wound, vintage, small aesthetic that is just perfect for putting on and not being flashy. It's a really, really interesting watch, and I think it's one of the best pieces you can get if you want something classic without paying cash. Calatrava prices. The handwound Caliber 9S64 is especially pretty. It's unhindered by a rotor weight so you can see everything going on in there in pure detail. The only thing I didn't like about that watch was its ivory dial, which was a little bit plain. But all that has been remedied by the SBGW267G. This adds a textured dial to that classic watch, and I think that makes it absolutely perfect. It reminds me of some of the classic oysters that Rolex has made with the textured parchment dials, and I really, really like it. At £4,150, it's not an unreasonably priced watch. It's not cheap, but it's not up there with Rolex either. And you can now get it in a bunch of different colours, including pale blue and green and... My favourite, a dark blue. Except that's US only. Again. Thanks, Grand Seiko. Now I absolutely love the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch. I've had a few in the past and I will probably have more again. But my big problem with the Moonwatch is that there are so many and it starts to erode that feeling of specialness that it should really have. When it comes to special edition versions of the Moonwatch, I think Omega misheard the expression once in a blue moon and thought they meant once every time you can see the moon. There are so many different anniversary editions, it's ridiculous. And in fact, in looking for the one that I'm showing you now, I couldn't find it because there were other special editions with the same name. That's why this particular Apollo 11 50th anniversary special edition is so good, because whilst the name might not mean anything special anymore, thanks to Omega ruining it, the watch itself looks absolutely stunning and has that special something about it that it really deserves. This feels like a proper go at paying respects to a brilliant watch. In moonshine gold with the burgundy bezel and onyx markers, it looks really, really special. And especially with the new Caliber 3861 also gold plated. Altogether, it's a package that feels really, really special, and I think it's one that will be very collectible in the future, especially since it's a limited edition to just 1014. I have no idea why. Perhaps you do, and you can let me know in the comments below. Unfortunately, at £34,400, it's not one I'm going to be buying anytime soon, but for all the lucky so-and-sos that have, enjoy it. Now the next watch in my list might be a little bit of a disappointment, but to me it is one of my most favourite watches ever, and I'm very lucky to say that I own one. 
it is the Tudor Black Bay 58, and I think it is the perfect watch. It's got great vintage styling, it's built like a tank. You don't have to change the date, and it won't cost you a fortune. At just £2,760, you won't find anything like it at anywhere near the price. I just really like that I can wear it anywhere and do anything with it and not worry about it. On the NATO strap, it's incredibly comfortable and it's incredibly robust as well. I have been tempted by the Black Bay Pro and the Pelagos 39, but do you know what? I'm happy with the one I've got, and I think that speaks volumes for how good this watch is, especially when you look at my past history when it comes to buying watches. It's nice to appreciate what you've got. <laughs> My next favourite watch is one with the longest name I've ever heard, and I'm going to have to read it out from my screen because there's no way in hell that I'm going to be able to remember it. It is the IWC Pilot's Watch 41 Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One Team IW388108. I've had a few IWCs in the past and they've all been pilot's watches. I absolutely love the simplicity of them, the ruggedness of them as well, and I think this particular watch, the Petronas edition, adds a very special something to it. Of course it's very convenient that the Petronas green is similar to another unnamed green made by a certain jeweller that is very popular right now, but who cares? I absolutely love it. It now also gets the in-house calibre 69385 for all of you purists out there, and when you throw all of that together you get a watch that I just can't stop thinking about. And at £6,900 it's not the cheapest chronograph out there, but thankfully the price isn't as long as the name. And yes, I would definitely have it with the green strap as well. <laughs> My next favourite watch isn't so much a watch as it is a thing that is done to a watch. Now a real favourite brand of mine is H. Moser and I absolutely love the Streamliner. It's a really cool take on that 70s aesthetic that actually combines some of that 90s look to create something completely different. It's like a Tag Heuer link, but nice. So I really like the recent Streamliner Tourbillon. It's got the awesome caliber HMC 804 in it, with the Tourbillon showing through the dial, and that's really cool. But that's not my favorite thing. My favorite thing is the Vanta Black dial. Now we've seen this a few times on Moses. If you don't know what Vanta Black is, it's a nano textured coating that absorbs 99.9% .9 of visible light. That makes this dial effectively a black hole. I've never seen anything like it. It is awesome and you have to see it for yourself. Now the Streamliner Tourbillon Vantablack is around $100,000 and there have been other Moses with Vantablack dials as well, but they aren't my ultimate favourite. My absolute favourite Vantablack watch from H. Moser is the blacker than black Streamliner. Now the nano texture coating of Vantablack means that touching it does ruin it, so the watch was more of a, a fun kind of thing that they did than an actual wearable watch, but they do say they are working on one that will be wearable, and I can't wait. <laughs> Now the next watch I've chosen as one of my 10 favourite watches of the moment isn't actually really particularly wearable as a watch. At 47mm across and 17mm thick, it's a bit of a house brick, but I still absolutely love it. It's a bit like a Ducati. I'd love to own one. I'd never actually ride it because I'm too scared, but I would love to have it in my living room so I can look at it, and it's the same for this watch. This is the Grubel Forsey 24 Seconds Architecture, and it is an absolute visual masterpiece. The funny thing is, is for a Grubel Forsey, it's not particularly complicated. What really works here is how every single component has been isolated so you can enjoy it by itself. From the angled tourbillon to the main spring barrel to the sub seconds and the power reserve, each one is its own little pillar, its own little substructure within the watch. It's like a science museum exhibit that you can just pour over and explore every detail, and it even has little windows all around the side of the watch that you can see in from the side as well. They call it a city on the wrist, but I think it's more like the world's most expensive and awesome kinder egg. At £500,000 though, I won't be getting one anytime soon. Now if you took a look at that Grubel Falsy and thought I love it but I wish I could buy one that I could actually wear and not fall over with, then have a look at this. This is the MBNF Legacy Machine Split Escapement Evo and it is absolutely stunning. 
It not only looks incredibly modern with the way everything is laid out, but also incredibly classic as well with the styling and the design of it. Basically, it looks f***ing cool. The balance has been split from the rest of the escapement so it can be suspended over the dial, completely free of all the other parts. The whole thing floats above the dial, underneath that big domed crystal, and the effect is just magic. What's really awesome as well is that this whole kind of avant-garde watchmaking was established by Max Busser with Harry Winston and the Opus series, something he carried on by himself in his own brand. It's awesome to see how far he's come from creating these machines that everyone thought were crazy to now being lauded as one of the greats of the industry. It also comes in a really cool bunch of different colours, so whatever your fancy, you can take your pick. And what's really impressive is just how cheap it is. It's, compared to these other watches we've been looking at, only £65,000. What am I talking about? £65,000 isn't cheap. We're off to the Netherlands for my next favourite watch, built by the Dutch duo Groenefeld. Groenefeld? 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 Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Groenefeld looks, but I absolutely love the innovations these guys come up with. This is the 1941 Grunegraf. Extra points for the name, I think. And it is incredible. Now, in a minute repeater with all of those fast moving parts, you need something to control it all and stop it exploding. There is a spinning mass known as a centrifugal governor that controls the movement of all of those parts to keep it regulated and calm. What Grunefeld have done is to use one of those here in this chronograph to slow down the movement of the parts to make it last longer. When you reset the watch, instead of the second hand snapping back to zero, the centrifugal governor actually slows its retreat, and it is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I'm not sure how necessary it is given that chronographs have been fine for centuries, but nevertheless I really like the thinking and I love watching it return to zero. It is a £140,000 fidget spinner. But for my most favourite watch of all time in the world forever and ever to infinity and back, it is to a Langenzöhner, to the 1815 Tourbillon Handwerksgunst. Now I absolutely love the 1815 Tourbillon. The movement is awesome, the finishing is incredible, the tourbillon is amazing, especially with that zero reset mechanism. But here with the Handwerksgunst you get an extra special something that makes this watch my absolute favourite. Just take a look at that dial. That has been hand carved from a single piece of metal, very very slowly and painstakingly. It's a bit like a little mini Petra carved from the rock to reveal what's underneath it. As the watchmakers hand hew the finish, they reveal each of the numbers. It's like a, a little quarry with all these little miners working away at it. It doesn't matter that this watch costs $160,000, it is still my most favourite ever, and I would do some very bad things to get one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Why don't you let me know down in the comments below what some of your favourite watches are and what you thought of my selection. Please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell too if you want to see more videos from me. And if you want to watch more now, you'll also find them over on the Watchfinder channel as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.